Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk to you guys about something that I don't like to talk about. I'm going to start by sharing an experience that I had. Um, I was in a Sunday school class back when our family were part of the Brighamite Church. And my wife and I were sitting there and there was a visitor who brought up a topic that made people uncomfortable. And that was the topic of demonic possession. And at the end, he said, you know, this is something we, we don't talk about. Why is that? And he said, you know, they kind of talked about it a little bit. And so people kind of gave some ideas. And I really wanted to raise my hand and say, okay, look, these particular ideas come from a book written by a Protestant that had a near-death experience and around the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. And some people in the Salt Lake City Church, of course, at that time, I just would have said this church because I was a member at that time, really liked what they read. And so it kind of got picked up on this idea that if you do these things, then, then these things can, can happen. But the Spirit told me not to say anything, and so I didn't. And then he, he asked a question, and he looked around the room. He stood up and just kind of turned around, and he said, has anybody here had experiences in demonic possession? The bishop and a couple of the people turned, and they looked at me to see if I would say anything. And I just put my head down, and I wouldn't talk about it. And then... It was decided that we would move on to another topic. I will tell you that I have had experiences with these things. So why don't I talk about them? The reality is that if all I want are web hits, I could share all kinds of experiences that I've had and they're, they're sensational stories. They're true, but they're the kind of stories that, that people like to hear. I've made the mistake in the past when I was younger of sharing them with people who then shared them as basically ghost stories, if you will, that they would tell around campfires and parties. In fact, I'm fairly certain that one of, at least one of my friends still does that today. And that's not the point of, of these things. The message that I feel I'm supposed to share generally with everyone as a part of the ministry the Lord has called me to is that of love, unity, acceptance. I know a lot of people say that, what's, what's the phrase they say? I cast the net too wide is what one person likes to say. But I don't believe the net is too wide. I think that every church has its niche group and so they, they, they narrow themselves down by excluding large numbers of people. And if we're to be a fellowship and not a church, then we, we really can't do that. And if that casts a wide net, well, I'm a universalist. So I would say that the Lord's net is pretty wide. So why am I bringing these things up now? A while back... I made a video on how to talk to angels, how to, how to reach angels, how to have angelic experiences. We're Latter-day Saints. We are a people of revelation. We are meant to be a prophetic people. It says right in our scriptures that we should be talking to angels all the time. I mean, not literally. Don't take that literally. But it shouldn't be something that's a crazy story or something abnormal. It should be something, not casual, it is a sacred experience, but it, it should be something that is just as normal as someone asking for a priesthood blessing. It shouldn't be as normal and average as giving an opening or closing prayer, but it should be at least as normal as offering any sort of priesthood blessing. And I, it's been a while since I've made a video since then, because there were some negative reactions to that and their concerns were genuine. And so I prayed on you know, what to do next. What do I say next? And the Lord this week 
made it very clear to me that the next thing should be now. And what I should talk to you about is the fact that we have to do these things in righteousness. I have heard stories of people putting rocks in hats like Joseph Smith did to translate the Book of Mormon or to receive various revelations. And it's worked. Sometimes not in a good way. Why? Is it because putting a rock in a hat is evil? No. It's because you have to do things in the right spirit. And even when we're in the right spirit, if we're not doing things, I want to say the right way, but that's not exactly the correct verbiage. The Lord will protect us to a certain extent. But if we're not being wary of evil spirits, then we can be deceived. And so why don't I tell these stories? Because it's been my experience that the people who want to hear these stories, they want to scratch an itch. And that itch is a curiosity that invites an unholy spirit. It takes away from the sacredness of things that happen and creates an opportunity for evil to enter a situation, a place, or a, even a being. And I can tell you, I can testify to you, that I know this is true because I've seen it happen firsthand. The very first time I had to do any sort of exorcism, casting out an evil spirit, one of my, my very best friends at the time, someone who's still very near and dear to me, went into a trance and was possessed by a demon. And we thought we were doing something good, something wholesome, something righteous. But we weren't. We were doing something out of curiosity and not out of sacredness, not out of holiness. I didn't know what to do. At the time, I only held the Aaronic priesthood. I didn't think I could do anything about it. But the Lord told me that I could and how to do it. I raised my hand to the square and I cast the entity out in the name of Jesus Christ. And the first time that I did it, he shook and it didn't exactly work because I didn't have the confidence. And when it took, it was because I used the word command and I knew it was true because the Lord was telling me. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was repentant from what we had done. And from that time forward, things were different. And eventually the Lord taught me how to prevent these things from happening again. And I'm not going to get into that. I, I don't feel comfortable doing so. But I want you to know that these things are real. That, that they're dangerous. But that our fear of them shouldn't stop us from seeking true divine revelation and partnership, that personal relationship with God. If we know the Lord in that special way, then when the deceivers come, we know how to see through the deception. I talked about some of those last time, but I'm going to tell you right now, the biggest way to avoid the situation altogether is to not do things out of curiosity. Religion is not a science experiment. We're, it's not cooking. We're not going to put three eggs together with some milk and cheese and make an omelet. It's relationship building. If I want to find a friend, I'm not going to knock on every door and let's call our friend, let's call our friend John. I'm looking for my friend John. I'm not just going to randomly knock on every door and say, is John here? Is John here? That wouldn't work. Now, back in the day, I could pull out a phone book. Nowadays, I guess I could go online to a phone book website, I guess. Was it whitepages.com, yellowpages.com? I'm not even sure that still exists, honestly. And I could see if I could find their 
name, well, using the name, find their address and phone number. But wouldn't it make sense to call first if I have their phone number? And then when I go to knock on the door, I want to be cautious. I want to make sure it's the right house. There was one time when I was house shopping and we pulled up to this house, we parked the car and we were waiting because we were early and the realtor wasn't there yet. And there were people in there. They were eating and they were watching TV and they were hanging out. And I was like, man, I can't believe they're still there. We're about to go look at their house. And right about the time I went to go knock on their door, I had this weird feeling, this weird suspicion. I started my car and I pulled up a little bit and I realized that there was a big S in front of the street name. And I was like, oh no, we're on South whatever street. We needed North whatever street. And so we went to the correct place. So when you're seeking spiritual experiences, you're, you want to seek that experience with someone you actually know, which is the Lord. You want to look the Lord up in the scriptures. Well, think of that as the phone book. You want to call the Lord. And you want to speak to the Lord in prayer. You want to receive revelation, directions on where you're going and how to get there. And when you get there, you want to use the signs and tokens that you have to ensure that you're at the right house. And brothers and sisters, I would recommend that you not do these things alone. Be with someone else. Imagine what would have happened to my friend had I not been there. Now, that said, I was very foolish. Imagine what would have happened if it would have happened to both of us. So be safe. Don't experiment. You do want to experiment upon the word. Alma talks about that. But that's building that relationship so you can get to that point to where you can have these types of experiences. Yes, some people are going to see an angel and the angel is going to tell them that God is real and the Book of Mormon is true and, and give them revelation and information. Some people are going to feel the Holy Spirit touching their heart in a special way. Everyone's first experience with God is different. And that's a good thing because God meets us where we are. He meets us how we need to be met where we need to be met. So the beginning of the journey, God comes to us. And we begin our journey growing in grace, planting that seed and growing the tree so we can get to the point to where we can stand in the presence of the Lord. We can stand in the presence of angels. Angels can bless us. And I can testify to you also that there are people, and you may be one of them, who have been literally, hands on their head, blessed by an angel. And you just didn't know. Because we've been taught not to look and not to listen. So I'm going to leave you with a testimony and a Thursday thought. The testimony is that these things are real. The gospel of Jesus Christ is true. Mormon is correct. The days of miracles have not ceased. So let's go be that prophetic people we've been called to be. My Thursday thought for you is, where are you in this? And if you are seeking spiritual experiences, why? Why do you want them? And if you, it's, it's to deepen your personal relationship with the Lord, then that is a good, sacred, and wholesome reason to do so. Now, last thing here, if you have questions, if you're unsure, if you want to talk to somebody about your experiences, please don't hesitate to reach out. It's one of the reasons why I'm here. It's a big part of the, you know, the School of the Prophets is all about teaching the Latter-day Saints and, and others to be the prophetic people we've been called to be. 
So info at cjccf.org. Please don't hesitate to reach out. I will not judge. I will listen. So that's my Thursday thought for you. And I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.